<laughs> that sounds like an angry bee. Hi, I'm Heinbach, it's good to have you back. In this video I want to take a look at the Make Noise Strega, the new instrument that Make Noise developed together with Alessandro Cortini and that sparked a lot of questions. Make Noise sent me a unit and they're also sponsoring this video, so thank you very much. I asked you what you would like to know about Strega, both on my Instagram and here on YouTube and there were a lot <laughs> of questions. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to edit this, but probably looks cool. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of questions. I'll try to answer all of these as this video progresses. But first I want to show you some sounds that you can achieve with the Strega. One thing that is a bit tricky when you're doing sound design, at least in my experience, is creating modulation that feels natural when you're using electronic sources. You want something that feels real yet can be detached from the real world, a hyper real. The Strega has these touch plates that allow for human interaction and that makes it easy to craft and adapt your original patches to what you see on your screen. instrument that is designed with Alessandro Cortini will of course excel at drones, but that's not all. It also does rhythmic sequences without any external input.
piece was done exclusively on the Strega, sequenced by a No Control. And I think it answers your question. Yes, this can sound lush, though you have to beware two things when patching, and I'll go into that a bit later. I already mentioned that I used the No Control with the Strega, but the No Coast works perfectly with it. And the combination of these three is... It's where my true joy begin when I explored this instrument. Patching the three together immediately brought me joy because it made me realize how well thought out the whole No Control, No Coast and now Strager series is. It becomes a modern music easel and I salute Tony for having that vision. Now, please, just make a case for this. So they're all together and yeah, in a tiny little box with cables and stuff so I can carry this around with me because that's right now missing a proper stand for these or yeah, portable little case, pretty please. So it does play well inside the Make Noise universe, but what about other instruments?
using the Strega on bass might have been one of my favorite parts of working with it. It sounds pretty gorgeous for that. So we heard it on its own, together with other Make Noise instruments, processing other instruments, but how does it sound in a track? track I used the Strager as a sound source and everything was clocked from the TR-707 while the TR-606 provided all the drums. And I found it to work very well in this kind of cosmic context when run through a phaser. But how does it sound through five phasers? If you've stayed this long into the video, you deserve to know what the Strager actually is. And that's kind of simple to answer, and if you looked at it at a spec sheet, you wouldn't be probably that interested. Because it's basically a monophonic synthesizer with a looping envelope and a PT2399 delay. That doesn't seem like much, but Alessandro and Tony created something that's bigger than these parts. It's an 
instrument. It's not a second no coast, though from the specs you could think that. It's not a mini lira, it's very much its own thing. That's where looking at the specs ends, because it doesn't really tell you what this instrument is. That's probably also why the copy is a bit vaporous and you've got these yeah, alchemistical processes that are mentioned, which yeah, you can think of what you want with that. Uh, it's probably a way to express what yeah Tony and Alessandro thought about when making this which is hard to grasp yeah when you look at the building blocks which we're just gonna do now first we get an input section here that will accept many different levels you can route the signal out again and use it to modulate other things or you can add it to the mix of the voice which consists of this oscillator here which has a main pitch and a fine tune this is the bass triangle oscillator and this is the folded output which will let all kinds of yeah interesting harmonics There are modulation inputs here with attenuators and for the main pitch you've got this input that can be attenuated or you've got a 1 volt per octave here. This part here is a modulator of the VCA of the oscillator and it seems to me that it's kind of like a shift register because if I turn this up just a little and now add the activation. You get this very interesting kind of modulation. We can add that modulation to the pitch too, because it's normal to the pitch influence. might also be some kind of sample and hold circuit, but that's just speculation on my part. We also have CV outs for the circuit, so you can use it to modulate other things or send it anywhere in the Strega. This part here makes up the tonic, and the tonic is then sent to a time. This is a PT2399 delay, which is used in karaoke machines and many other machines I've covered on this channel. And I had in the beginning a bit of PTSD, yeah, because I've heard this chip so much and I even helped Coma Electronic tune it for their field kit effects and yeah, really dive into how that sounds when I was beta testing it. It's always very interesting what route designers take when they work with that chip. And Alessandro and Tony took the route of yeah, making this noisy. Because you got a whole lot of range to the noisy part where you hear all kinds of clock noise and basically, yeah, you are using this chip wrong. And in this range you don't have many options, so this doesn't do Kapla strong as much as I would like it to. You can blend in the echo with this control.
this is the feedback parameter. it down, we've got this filter. What I just did was set the delay to self oscillate and then I added a note from the tonic. So we get two different notes going on. And we can even add a third note using this function generator, which is a looping envelope. This is normally used for modulation and it's normal to the filter, but when we take it out and put it in the input, we get a note. Let's hear this clearly the node, can change the shape, and the pitch. Add this carefully. So it doesn't drown out the echo. You can still hear two different notes. And now, at the tonic, And already you've more going on than you would by just looking at the spec sheet of this. And especially if you're used to the search way of patch programmability, this is something I encourage you to explore with the Strager because yeah, there's always another voice hidden somewhere. And I could probably add a fourth one by getting the filter to resonate at just the right note. But that's something you can do as homework. In the end, everything goes to this output section with a headphone out and a modular level out, which is very handy if you want to integrate this in your modular system. As with the tonic section, you've got patch inputs for most of the parameters here and here, as well as the blend. If you want to explore the softer side of Strega, keep the levels down because I noticed halfway through recording at some point that I was overdriving the mixer so hard because this has a hot output. And also internally, it's easy to overdrive things. Give it a bit more space, so leave the volume of the oscillators low, add just a touch of wave folding and set the delay at 1 to 5 o'clock. If you go beyond, you will hear a lot of noise and then use the filter again to dampen the sounds. You saw me using the touch plates while I was playing this. And the rule of thumb is a uh, round one sends a voltage and a square one receives the voltage. This enables quick patching and modulation of a patch with your flash. So if I want to modulate the activation, I press this and then touch one of the round ones. For example, the oscillator out. I really love the touch plates as a quick way to play a patch without unpatching it. And one tip that I have is don't use all your flash. Try to edge your way in and 
experiment with how much you need and every person is different. If you're a guitar player, yeah, your hands might have more calluses. So you might need all of your flesh. And of course, you can experiment putting different things on the touch plates. Please excuse the PTSD joke, but I really had heard a lot of the PT2399 chip when I reviewed this lovely unit, the recursive machine by the human comparator, and also the dust collector sitting here under my table. And coincidentally, this came up. How does this compare to the Strager? And I mean, they look kind of similar. They even share almost the same size. But yeah, the recursive machine is something different from the mindset. It's based on the idea of everything running back into itself and it lives more in a world of endless feedback and all the stuff that you can do with it. You can get some comparable results, but this sounds nastier and grittier and yeah, more, more aggressive, I find. And also you don't have the lovely way of controlling this via the touch points, which you could add by using the all flash controllers by Landscape FM. And then you could probably approximate some of the workflow, at least, of the Strega on this. And if you have one of these, the uh, DIY only, I would encourage you to try that because I think this would open up this unit a lot. I can't compare this to the Lyra 8, as some of you might ask, because I simply don't have one. Just from my limited experience with it, playing it at stores and at friends, I would say it is, again, something completely different from the mindset where you approach it. Another instrument I've been asked to compare this to is the Seat Lombarda Coco Qantas. And there I can say two different things. You can't really compare them. Both have a crunchy sound if you want to, but Strega doesn't do looping. So that's one of the biggest features of the Coco Qantas. And Coco Qantas has no filters. It's two different instruments that are not really comparable. One thing that I found very positive about this Traeger, and there you can see that Alessandro is a working musician who gets stuff done, basically, that this is not a one-trick machine. And it's not something that requires a lot of time and effort to produce good results. This is something that I would take to a session, be it in a theater play or in a studio, and just get something down quickly. Because once you know your way around and have read the manual, you find that you can return to certain safe positions and then go away from them. The overall sound of the Strager can be as clean or as dirty as you like. There is a bias to the noisy side though, and that is by intent, because Alessandro, yeah, when I talked to him and in the interview also, he said he wanted things to sound like they've been underwater for 30 years. And that's what the PT2399, as Tony interpreted it, does. It is very open on the noisy, clocky, yeah, ocean side of things and there's not so much range on the Kapla Strong fast side. I really like the Kapla Strongy fast side of that chip so for me that could have been more. I've yeah I've listened to the clock noise a bit too much but I simply keep the delay time short and try to see what strange resonances I can get. And speaking of resonances there is something very much Zinti like about the whole Strega. I mean, it's Alessandro is known to love the Zinti, and it's little wonder that it's in there because you can hear in the resonance of the delay something that is remindful of the spring reverb of a Zinti. And in the pure oscillator tones, there are some settings that remind me of a Zinti, and for that matter, the, the Zuntracks that I have here. 
Now, and that was a very lovely color to discover because you can ask yourself, how much is this instrument Alessandro Cortini? And since it's yeah, basically his ideas as interpreted by Tony in the back and forth. So there is a whole lot of him in there, but it can be your own easel to work with and create your own things. For whom is this instrument? I would say if you're a professional working in sound design and music production, it's a no-brainer. This is something that will give you endless fun and enable you to create a lot of sounds and music in a very fast time. If you already own the no coast and no control, yeah, this will enhance that system. So I can also recommend it for you. If you don't have any experimental synthesizers in your studio, then this is also a good choice for that. If you're a guitarist or bassist or other traditional <laughs> instrument player and you're looking to expand into modular, this might be a nice entry for you. I just realized I could go on and on with that list. In the end, it comes down to if you're looking for something to experiment with and that will, despite being an experimental instrument, give you results that are musically useful. So if that ticks one of your boxes, I can recommend this Strega. I hope that answered all of your questions. Thank you for sending these in. This yeah, motivated me to record even more than I would have done usually. And I'm gonna make a huge sound pack for everybody on my Patreon of all these different scapes and sounds that you can then use in your music freely. More questions down in the comments or visit the subreddit and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Thanks Alessandro and Tony and everybody at Make Noise for sponsoring this video, yeah, and letting me have again fun with one of your instruments. Bye.